Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Family Fellowship Chapel Facebook page today. On this last Sunday of April, we certainly are glad to have you with us. We want to welcome all those of you from around the country that are joining in with us this morning. We are grateful to have you. We're thankful for you being on uh, Facebook with us. We're faith thankful for you being on YouTube, uh, joining us on the radio, uh, 1300 AM, uh, Mount Airy. Uh, we're also grateful for those who've come our way through podcast, iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. All of those can be accessed through Mike Springston FFC. We're just grateful to have you this morning. We're going to be preaching this morning on part three of the five promises in the name of Jesus, and we're going to use a New Testament application of those promises. And so uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, I hope that you are handling uh, the separation and uh, doing well at home and getting your work done from home. I also hope that you're joining us at 6 o'clock on Sunday evening for our family Bible studies where our goal is to take America back one family, one husband, one wife, and one child at a time. 6 o'clock on Sunday evenings. You don't want to miss those Bible studies. We've had studies on tell us about God, tell us about Jesus, tell us about the Holy Spirit, tell us how to be saved. And so uh, we're, we're excited about those and hope they're being a blessing to you. And so this morning we want to begin by prayer. And so you bow with us. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the presence of God that is available to us uh, as we have dealt with this current situation. We, we just love you and know that you are with us. And we thank you for the blessing of your presence. Now, God, as we worship, study your word, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will manifest yourself to us in a great and mighty way. And for that, we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's time that we come to wait upon you for the morning offering. I am very thankful to every one of you who have given and been faithful to giving during uh, this time of separation. And uh, I want to remind you, of course, to, of the P.O. Box uh, in Toast, North Carolina, and the opportunity to give online through Podbeam and uh, Mike Springston FFC. And Jesse is going to put those on the screen for you so that you will have them at your disposal again. But you've been very faithful. And even people that have never given before into our ministry has, uh, been, have been faithful to give to us. And we are so thankful for that and thankful for your offering and know that God will bless us by it and bless you for it. So uh, we want to encourage those of you who are listening that have never uh, given into our ministry before uh, we want to encourage you today to uh, use the mailing opportunity or use the pod bean opportunity to provide your gift into the ministry. We love you. We appreciate your giving. We appreciate you uh, desiring to give and know that your uh, gift is being planted into good seed. Now, if we can pray, uh, I uh, uh, want to... Uh, Bless your offering today, and I want to, as you can see, my cat is ready to give, bless God. She has come to the forefront today so that she can be first in line to give. And so with that, we want to go to God in prayer. And this is Kit Kat, by the way. She's my uh, little little cat that uh, God blessed us with a number of years ago and we're so glad that she's here ready to pray with you so that you can give. Ready to pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give today. We thank you for the uh, time where we bring our offering back to you and we bless you with uh, 
what you have done for us, knowing God that you are giving to us, and knowing God that in our giving, you are blessing us back and meeting every need. There is nothing in the world that you're holding back from us, but yet when we open the storehouse and pour out of ourselves that you are opening the top of the storehouse and refilling and meeting every need in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, it's come to the time when we go to worship. Uh, Juliana and the FFC praise team are going to lead you in some music. As always, I encourage you to look at the Scripture, listen to the Scripture, allow the Scripture to be your driving force in worship. Relate the Scripture to the words that are being sung. Don't get caught up in the music. The music will be beautiful. Our praise team does a beautiful job of expressing themselves musically. But get caught up in how the music relates to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to bless you during this time of worship. Psalm 145, verses 1 through 2, it says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, 
Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
to life again. Hallelujah. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom and yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus.
worthy of all praise and glory and honor this morning, God. We thank you. We praise you for who you are and your presence in this place, God. Well, we want to thank Juliana and the praise team for their work this morning. Uh, they always do a great job, and we're so thankful for them. Well, let's turn our attention now to the Word of God. We're going to uh, finalize part three of the promises in the name of Jesus, and uh, we're going to share the New Testament application of this as we uh, conclude these three Sunday morning sessions. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Well, let's begin with this text, and then we'll pray. The text comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into, the, into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you today for your word. Open our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our heart that we can understand what the word of God says to us. Father, we thank you today that the Holy Spirit will not only open our eyes, ears, and heart, but the Holy Spirit will speak to us about how to apply the word of God to the meeting of our need. We surrender to you today, Holy Spirit. We ask you to speak. We ask you to minister. We ask you to give us wisdom beyond measure as we minister the gospel to your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. So we're talking about the promises of God that are located in Mark chapter 16 that Jesus shared with us, and we're in part three of the promises that are in the name of Jesus. We now know that these five promises are that we would cast down devils, speak with new tongues, nothing inside us would hurt us, nothing outside us would hurt us, and that we would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Today we're going to take a look at the New Testament application of what Mark wrote in verses 19 and 20. He said, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The phrase that Mark uses that says that he sat down on the right hand of God is a most significant one indeed. This statement assures us that the works that were divinely appointed for him to do were all accomplished and complete. When he sat down on the right hand of God, everything that needed to be put in place was in place. Everything that man would need to overcome the enemy was already Placed, completed, furnished, and Paul said we are complete in Him. The assurance that what he had done would make his enemies his footstool and that we the church were completed and completely furnished for the work and works associated with the spread of the gospel. When the gospel goes out, do you know where it ultimately goes and where it ultimately is received? It goes to a particular person. It goes directly to an individual. This ministry, this gospel that must be preached is a personal gospel. It goes 
into the heart of man and changes man, one man, one woman, one boy, one girl at a time. Jesus has told us how He would deal with the individual person. He'll deal with us in all of the power and authority that He experienced as He was raised from the dead according to Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. So for any man, there is always the expression, the possibility of the expression of the six works of salvation that reside in Jesus' name. In this case, the activator of that plan is the magnificent name of Jesus. When we release that name by faith, and by faith in that name, we activate the power that is in the name, and that release will accomplish the meeting of whatever need we have brought before the throne of grace. Let's watch it in operation as it worked for Paul and John in Acts chapter 3. Now, I don't want you to get caught up in the fact that this is a biblical application, a biblical story that happened so long ago. I want you to get caught up in the reality that if it happened then, it will happen again. And if it will happen again, it could happen to you. It should be happening to you. Now watch the word. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. These men were going to worship and pray. They were not necessarily on their way to heal anyone who was sick. They were going to pay their dues to their God. They were going to worship just like you did today. However, they had been endued with a power that was so strong that on a moment's notice, they could use the source of that power. And when they did a translation and a transfer of the dynamic power that was in that source and that is in that source, would take its effect upon whatever or whoever that source was conferred. The expression of that source was in the use of the name of Jesus. And then verse 2, and there was a certain man. Oh, think about that. He was nondescript. He was just a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb. You know, you could be that certain man today. You might have that certain need today. You might be the one who has been laid in position and remained in position for however the duration of your condition may be. You could be that one today. But this man had been lame from his mother's womb and was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. He was known as lame by all who saw him. Think about that. He had been there daily for all the people to see as they came to the temple. Now I want you to notice this. Those Jews, under the limits of the law, had no means to help him had no means to solve this man's problem except to show him some kindness by giving him some money. He was an unflourishing man who was laid in a flourishing gate. Glory to God. He was a man who was not flourishing just like some of you. Your spiritual life isn't flourishing. You've not found Christ. You've not touched the hem of the Almighty King's garment. But he was in a place where it was known as the flourishing gate. 
You've come today to hear the gospel preached. And you're in a place that the word of God is flourishing. But your spirit isn't flourishing. Your life isn't flourishing. Your body isn't flourishing. Your finances aren't flourishing. But today you have come to the place and been laid at the place that is the place of flourishing. And here was this man, much like many of us, who was just laid there, carried there, put there in the same state day by day by day by day, unflourishing, but in a place known as the place of flourishing. We are in a time, friend, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is flourishing. It is flourishing across Facebook. It is flourishing through websites. It is flourishing in the hearts of those who would come to believe it. Today could be your day to flourish. Today could be your day to come out of your unflourishing state, your unsatisfying state, your condition of instability into a total condition of flourishing and prosperity because of the gospel that is in the name of Jesus Christ. You can begin to cast down devils, speak with new tongues. Nothing outside you or nothing inside you would hurt you. And you, can, you would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. But more than that, the Word of God would begin to flourish and confirm itself on the inside of you. It was a gate that people, now watch this now, people who were flourishing would pass through. They would look at him with this sense, and I know you know what I'm about to say. And many of you could even say it. Boy, I just thank God that, that, that that's not me. You ever said that? There but by the grace of God go I. But they had no power to do one thing about the condition that this beggar was in. That's a sad state of affairs. But yet we have the opportunity in Christ Jesus to be totally completed in Him, operate in the power of the resurrection, bring about the goodness of God upon man, expose the promises of God to man, and flourish. What a wonderful position that we have. They passed Him every day and they said, Oh, well, there but by the grace. Here, brother, this is what I have for you. I have a kind word. I have a prayer. I have a little bit of money. Oh, it's just so sad the state that you're in. Then look at him and say, Boy, here son, I, I, I'm just glad. I, I feel for you. Have you ever heard that? Sure you have. This satisfied both parties in reality. This satisfied both parties. Because the man that was seated at the gate called Beautiful, the flourishing gate, was not flourishing. But he was satisfied because he had received something because he didn't know any different. He had no uh, point of reference, frame of reference that was any different because from his mother's womb he had been lame. All he knew was that I'm here, they put me here every day, and people give me stuff. They're satisfied with it. I'm satisfied with it. But the certain man, and I use that term certain man because that certain man could be you today, was unaware of just how much flourishing he might and would be able to do when his condition came in contact with the power that was in the name of Jesus. Who seeing Peter, now the certain man, saw the men of God. Now I want you to see that today. The certain man saw the men of God. In this case it was Peter and John. Today you're looking through the screen and you're seeing me. And I'm the man appointed by God to preach this message under the anointing to you. 
directly to you in your certain condition. Whatever that condition is, is has no respect to the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ that will minister to you and that will satisfy the longing that is on the inside of your heart. So there he saw Peter and John and he looked at them as if to ask for an alms. Now watch him. He, like most people, was seeking something that he could touch. Something temporal, something material. And that was going to pacify him and make him valuable to those who kept him. So as many people, he was just seeking a fix. That's all he wanted. He, he just wanted something that, that fixed his immediate gratification. What he wanted was the validation of himself. Everybody that gave that man an alms validated in his mind. I'm lame, I'm carried here, I'm sat here, and this is what I do. I am a beggar, and a beggar is what I will be. So they validated, he was a beggar who begged. Think about that. Some are addicts, and uh, some get high, or some get drunk, and that validates their personality. What they're really doing is identifying their own personal view of themselves. I need this drink. I need this fix. There are some Christian people who need to be sick. That validates their beggar's position. Yeah. They're being validated by what they are, how their personality produces itself, and they're validated to be this is just me. This is how I am. Well, they're validating themselves. You know the line. You're probably about to say it. Eh, I was just born this way. In this case, the beggar was looking for a trinket or a bit of money. But my friend, that does not define the story. How you have personally validated yourself does not define the story. Now I want you to get this. This story of your life is not defined by how you have validated yourself. Let me tell you what defines your story. Oh, glory. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. That is the validation of the real story about you. Your personal validation is the only thing that is keeping you from looking unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of faith and turning your personal validation into the story of the cross and the cross changing your life. My God, what would I rather have? My own personal view of myself or my Heavenly Father's personal view of what He did for mankind that He created through Jesus Christ. I would rather have my Father call me the righteousness of God. I would rather have my Father call me a new creation. I would rather have my body begin to function as being healed. I would rather cast down devils, speak with new tongues. I would rather operate in the five promises of God and have the word of God confirmed in me with signs that followed. Well, in the spiritual realm, the story of your life is much deeper. In fact, the response of the men in and from the Spirit shows the definition of the value and view that is placed upon your person in the eyes of God. And friends, that's the real message of the application of what's in the name of Jesus Christ. And Peter, the Bible said, fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, look on us. Give me your attention. Turn your ear to me. Look directly at me. 
We used to say in football, eyes, and that meant everybody turned their eyes towards the speaker. I used to clap my hands, and when I clapped my hands in coaching, everything stopped. Everybody stopped. Peter and John looked and Peter said, look on us. I've got something to say to you. Peter knew that the value and personal view that the man had for his life, as that certain man saw it, was reflected by the state of which he was residing at the moment. This word, at the moment, has vital implications for any man who is about to encounter the name of Jesus. Did you know that every man in a condition that is associated with the curse of sin and death has the opportunity to discontinue his residence in that condition? They are in a condition that is a state fixed only under a law that has been done away with and completely redefined according to Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit who walk not after their personal validation of their physical self but walk after the spiritual validation of what God in Jesus Christ has done with them for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The validation of sin and death that was the mark upon your body because of the fall and the curse, that validation is eliminated and a new and redefined law is brought to activity. And that new law is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Your physical self has been eliminated. Your spiritual man has risen to the top. You no longer operate in your personal view. You operate in your spiritual view. And it's your spiritual view, glory to God, that comes alive on the inside of you. And it's your spiritual view that gives you life and gives you peace, according to Paul's writing in Romans chapter 8. The carnal life is death. The personal view and validation of who you are and why you are like you are is death. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus through the name of the blessed Son of God has given you life and peace. What an awesome thing to know. Well, do you see a new condition here? And a new position that's been fixed for us? That position is available to any man in any moment in which he hears, understands, and acts on what he believes. The old thing that kept us lame, your personal view that kept you lame, whatever lame means to you, kept you poor, kept you in drugs, kept you in alcohol, kept you in domestic violence, kept you in marital unrest, kept you at odds with your children, whatever the case may be. Your personal view, the old thing, the beggarly things that kept you in a position of constantly looking at yourself in such a way to validate your worth. See, people validate their worth sometimes by what they're involved with. This is just who I am. So I have to be argumentative. So I have to be mean. So I have to be sick. So I have to be at odds with my, parent, my, my uh, parents. I have to be at odds with my husband. I have to be at odds. I have to be negative. I have to be unhappy. Whatever the case may be. Those things that you relate your life to and your personal view to. Well, my friend, those are old things. When Jesus Christ comes in, a new thing happens. All of a sudden, you begin to walk, think, in love, joy, peace, goodness, temperance, meekness, 
faith and kindness and love. Things change. You become a new man by a new law. And it gives you life. When God breathed on Adam and he became a living soul, Adam began a work to keep the garden in the condition that it was given to him. When the breath of the Spirit of Christ, the Anointed One, breathes upon us, we are changed from the bondage of the man that Adam became into the life that Christ provides. It is stronger, deeper, and more powerful than the law that man lived under before. Glory to God. And he gave heed unto them. Now watch this. The certain man gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. So he turned his attention to them. He expected to receive something that was the uh, usual and that was in line with how he looked at himself. A sympathy offering of a trinket or a bit of money. Are you sitting in the same old place doing the same old things? Is your expectation of hope so tattered that you've reconciled yourself to remaining in the same condition? that has served to be totally unfulfilling. We need to change what we're hoping for and elevate our expectations. Then Paul Peter said, I want you to notice that Peter said something to this man. He spoke life to him. He spoke a new law to him. And if he accepted what Peter said, there was a body that would flourish with an ability that he had never known before. He said, silver and gold have I none. Here is what he's saying. I don't have one thing that validates your personal view of yourself. I don't have one item that you will be able to attach to this world. I'm not going to validate the way you think, nor am I going to give you the addict's fix that you expect. But then he said these words, but such as I have, I give thee. Well, what did he offer? He offered to the man value in a way that he did not value himself. He offered to validate the man in a way that all of the passers-by and the onlookers could not. He did not offer pity or sympathy, which was the fix that man expected. He didn't give him drugs. He didn't give him money. He didn't give him drink. He gave him no artificial hope. But then he said these words to him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This is the expression of what Jesus said in Mark 16. Use my name as the source. And when you do, my name will bring acts of deeds that will change the people upon which that name is conferred. And he took him by the hand. He reached out and grabbed him. The man extended himself to reach for the help that was foreign to his thinking. He agreed to do something that he had never done before. He had never walked. He had never been healthy. He had always been a beggar. He agreed to use limbs that prior to this moment had no strength to support his body. Now the man did four things that we have to acknowledge. First, he obviously forgot about what he thought of himself. He forgot his own view of himself. I want you to do that today. I want you to consider this. Forget the view you have of yourself. Beggarly, poor, sick, down, uh, unprosperous, argumentative and negative. Second, he obeyed the command. Thirdly, he agreed with what was said. Fourth, he received what he was told he would receive. These four acts in a moment changed his entire viewpoint on life. The validation of his life came from the hand of man. In a second, his foundation and expectations were transformed. He went from a beggar to a believer as he leaped and praised the God of creation. Now, and the Bible said Peter lifted him up. Peter supported him as he wobbled. Now you may wobble a little bit with what I'm preaching today. You may struggle a little bit with what I'm preaching today. 
There may be moments when the devil comes in and says, no, that can't be. You're not that way. You're going to be the way you've always been. No, no, no. And it, it may have its ups and it may have its downs. But you're going to begin to speak life to yourself. You're going to begin to talk life and you're going to begin to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as He checks your personality and as He brings up Himself in you. And whenever you start to go the direction of the old way, when you start to go the unflourishing path, you're going to stop and you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I bring myself in line with the Word of God. There may be a wobble. There's no record of him showing a desire to remain in the condition, though, that they found him in. So I want to ask you today, if a record were to be kept of you moving forward, what would the record be about you? Are you satisfied to be where you are? Are you satisfied to live the life you've just been living? Is that really your view your dream, your goals moving forward. Oh, I'm just satisfied with being a beggar. I'm satisfied with being sick. I'm satisfied with being down. I'm satisfied with being negative. I'm satisfied with being hurt. I'm satisfied with being trodden over. I'm satisfied with being taken advantage of. You know, friend, I don't believe there's one person that ever lived that legitimately would say that they are satisfied with that type of a life. Why don't you just take the hand of the Master today? You may wobble, but take the hand of the Master today. Make up your mind not to live in that condition. Make up your mind to change your mind about who you are and what God has got for you. Such a key comment that I'm making to you in the spirit world. Your own idea about your own condition impacts negative, negatively so much of what the Spirit of God can do for His people. In other words, we must have our heart's desire to be set on the freedom that the name of Jesus provides. And the Bible said as I begin to close, and immediately His feet and ankle bones receive strength. Do you know what that really says to me? What it really says to me is, is that when that man purposed in his heart to take the hand of Peter and to follow the commands of Peter, at first there may have been a little bit of struggle, but the more he latched on to what Peter had said to him in the name of Jesus and the more he took that into himself, all of a sudden, through the course of just a bit of time, his body began to do something that he never thought they could, that his body could do. The Bible said that immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He was healed. He was able to not wobble anymore. He came to a point where the spirit of life that was in the name of Jesus became the spirit in his body and his body began to function. And the strength came to it. My friend, it'll come to you too. The power that Jesus said would be in the name was on display. It'll be on display for you too. Jesus' name has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It had been experienced by man with no hope. But you have a hope today. That hope is in the name of Jesus Christ. That hope is in the blood of Calvary. That hope is in the resurrection of a living Jesus who's seated at the right hand of God, who has accomplished and completed everything that needed to be done. My friend, wherever there is an individual who has devalued himself and attempts to validate his life by the means that the world says is satisfying, there is a name that is above that condition that position and that circumstance of which that person is in. And that name is the name of Jesus. He went leaping and walked and entered into the temple, walking and praising God. That's you today. You're that certain man. You're that certain woman. You're the one that people are going to see walking and praising God.
God. Hallelujah. You're the one that's going to make a change today. Now I want to tell you today is your day and this is your moment. This is your moment. As I look at you through the, the, the Facebook page and through this camera, I'm speaking directly to you in the name of Jesus and I'm saying to your poor spirit, poor spirit, you stop being poor. Poor thought process, you stop thinking poor thoughts. Body, sick body, unwell body, you stop being unwell. In the name of Jesus, this belongs to you. And I'm holding you up today, grabbing you by the right hand. And you may wobble a little bit at what I'm saying. But as I'm lifting you up right now in the name of Jesus, strength is coming into your body and strength is coming into your spirit. Strength to go on. Strength to move on. Strength to praise on. Strength to pray on. Strength to seek God on. Strength to walk in the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. I pronounce it and declare it over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hand towards this camera and I sense the power of the living God, Father, I pray for those today who are poor in spirit. And I call them to no longer live in poverty in spirit no longer live in poverty in mind, but to come in the name of Jesus and strength to come to their wobbled body and strength to come to their wobbled minds. And as I release my faith today, the power and presence of God is causing the feeble knee and the feeble leg and the feeble heart and the feeble body to be strengthened by the power that is in that name, to confirm the word of God with signs that follow. Feebleness be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for those that are lost today. Pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me my sins. I'm a sinner. I've heard the name of Jesus the most wonderful and majestic and mighty name that has ever been pronounced, that at the name of Jesus, everything that has a name bow, and I have a name, and today I bow, and I pronounce you as Lord of my life, Lord of my core, changer of my spirit, man. I receive you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, we've come to the close of another Sunday. God bless you this week. Get on my Bible study tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll be having another great time. I pray that this will be a week where you flourish as you live in the beautiful gate and as you use the name of Jesus. God bless you is my prayer until we meet again. Jesus is Lord. And don't you forget it.